seven months ago, an opportunity arose for me to purchase an RV. I had so many questions about moving in full time, but before I found all the answers, I knew I wasn't going to turn it down. I bought it, I renovated it, moved in, and made a video about it and got lots of comments and questions. Here are some of those answers and responses, along with some tips and recommendations if you're considering doing the same. Hey, come on in. So my first recommendation is to have your guests always take off their shoes, because living in an RV, um, you're always walking in the same spot, so it gets really dirty. And if you can prevent that at all, it really helps. Another thing would be to um, have a space for everything. And that doesn't mean just putting things in the peripheral of, of the counter or the table or um, your living space, but having a special spot for it. Pretty much almost every bin has like a basket or a box or something like that. And it helps to keep things organized and um, much neater. This is also my desk. Uh, I work here almost every day and um, uh, which leads to another point of Wi-Fi. A lot of people wonder, well, how do you do Wi-Fi in a motorhome? Uh, my motorhome happens to have a cable kind of built in, connected to the walls, and it actually goes up here. Um, so I've just got a wireless modem up here. So that's one way to do it is always park where you've got cable, um, cable access. Or, um, of course, you can get those, um, I think they're called dongles, uh, like Wi-Fi dongles or something. So when I'm not working, I'm often here hanging out in my lounge space. I really recommend uh, keeping some sort of uh, place to lounge on, read a book, or watch TV. I tore out my the sofa that was built in, and I, I built this one instead to fit a little bit better. I don't use the lamps. Um, that are built into the motorhome just because the light bulbs are a lot harder to come across. Um, this is what they look like. They're, they're kind of unique. They're for boats as well. Um, and they, they create a lot of heat. So I thought, oh, well, let me get a better energy efficient option. So I got these LED lights and um, the, the color of the light is terrible. It's like a very dark blue and it feels like you're in a hospital. Um, so anyway, I just brought in my own lamps from my house and I actually only use three lamps in the whole motorhome. So continuing the tour, uh, here we are in my library. <laughs> so my RV has these um, cabinets all the way along. Um, I was actually thinking about tearing these ones out just to give me a little more walking space. But the other option is if it's available to you, um, is buying an RV or trailer with what are called slide outs. They actually just push out and it provides maybe like two feet extra of space, which is um, really benefit. It actually makes a big difference. Um, so that's one thing I'd recommend if you're um, looking into buying an RV. Uh, or I also would encourage you to consider um, getting an RV with a canopy on the outside that roll out. For example, you can either get one with the canopy that rolls out or you can buy a canopy to set up on your own, which is what I did. I got a really crappy one. And um, well, the first downside is it's either going to be eight to 10 feet wide. And sometimes you don't have that space, which would then be beneficial to have the one that rolls out that's attached to the RV. Um, but my canopy, it, it got massacred in the wind and the rain. Um, the other downside to having a canopy not attached is when you walk outside, there's nothing covering. So even if you bought one, it wouldn't have that covering when you walk out. Um, and then there's there's one other uh, difference that I've noticed between trailers, like if you're considering a trailer versus an RV. Uh, my RV, I call it my basement. I have like tons of storage below, I like these bins. And some of the bins go even the whole length of the floor. Um, and there are bins just along the entire outside of the RV. I look at all the trailers around and none of them seem to have the bin space. So um, I think that's one really good bonus for having an RV. So let's go check out the kitchen. Here's the kitchen and the dining room. Um, what, if I could have any more space in the RV, I would definitely have a little bit extra um, sink space. Um, and also remember, if, if you're used to having a dishwasher and you don't like to wash your dishes, uh, you probably will be washing your dishes in an RV. So 
I'm sure there's some models that come with dishwashers. So keep that in mind. Um, and uh, when storage is limited, you gotta be really savvy with your space. And since I don't use a microwave, I actually disconnected it from the circuit breaker and now I literally just use it as a big plastic storage box. I also use the, um, the stove for storage because I hardly ever use it and I don't keep the pilot light on. Um, sometimes when I've got um, dog milk bones, I'll keep them in there. And of course, in an RV, you're going to have a much smaller um, refrigerator. So families of four, probably not a good idea for living full time in an RV. Um, I have actually seen one of my neighbors I've seen inside their RV and they have, they have a full sized refrigerator in there. So there's always updates you can do um, or um, obviously modifications, like I've done a bunch of modifications. So there's always choices. So, you know, if you're really excited about it, I'd say follow it and just make changes to suit you. Um, so let's go check out the bedroom. This is a little alleyway. Um, this is actually, right here is my favorite part. I just love the blue sky and when the sun comes in, it just, I love the little lighting in this area. So that's the alleyway. And here is the master bedroom. Um, this is definitely a feature that you won't find in all RVs or trailers. In fact, many RVs and trailers, um, depending on what side, they'll have the, the beds almost elevated. So you have to get up on them with a ladder. And then they're like this close to the ceiling. Um, so, to, you know, consider that when you're buying your um, RV or trailer. Uh, another thing is I, I, I tried using the mattress that came with the RV and it was so terrible. I could hear the little springs like springing in the bed when I was laying on it and you know, feel them. So it was terrible. So I brought in my, my regular mattress that I used to use in my apartment and it was too big. It hung over like six inches. So, but I, I didn't know what to do because I was like, wow, I don't want to throw this away or give it away or whatever because it was such a great mattress. So what I ended up doing was I just took a hacksaw and I literally sawed right through the mattress. Um, I took off like six inches of the mattress. So on, on the other side, you'll have, um, you can find like kind of springs sticking out a little pokey, but I, mean, I haven't had a problem yet. Here's my bathroom. Um, whenever anybody comes over, I do have to educate them on how to use the toilet because, and not that it's hard, but, um, it's really important that, um, because of the way it opens, you know, it kind of opens and then it closes and that little door has a little groove that it goes into. Well, um, you got to make sure that people aren't, uh, closing that little door while toilet paper is like in it. Otherwise you got to clean it out. Um, also, so my shower is um, here. It is small and um, it's not gonna be everybody's uh, preference because one, the water pressure is a little bit low. Uh, so that's one thing that sucks. Two, another thing to consider before moving into an RV full time is, at least with mine, um, there's no instant hot water. So you, if you ever want hot water, you have to, like especially take a shower where you want a lot of hot water, you have to heat it up. My tank's five gallons, so it takes about an hour and I've got really hot water of five gallons worth. So waiting on the, um, the hot water, the water pressure's low, and then also I, I found that like if I'm shampooing my hair, I actually have to turn sideways. So that's another thing to consider is you're gonna have to, I mean, everything's smaller, so you're gonna be making little adjustments here and there. All right, oh, and then also, um, so also what you definitely have to remember that you're, you need to be considering, you have a gray tank and a black tank. And the gray tank is for all of your water from the kitchen sink, the bathroom sink, and then the shower. That tank fills up a lot faster than the black tank, which is everything that goes down the toilet. And I find when it's just me, I have to do it about every two to three days. If I don't, <laughs> I'll be washing dishes and a smell will start to come from the bathroom and the um, tub will be filling up with soapy, just gross water. So you gotta um, empty your tanks. And uh, at the same time, you also have to maintain the black tank uh, just cause 
sediment happens and you gotta um, you don't actually have to get down there and do anything but you need to use chemicals and um, kind of a, a routine to help it clean itself out. One other thing to consider uh, before buying an RV or trailer and live in, trying to live in it full time, um, you, you're definitely going to have problems as if uh, as a homeowner does. For example, I have already had, I've had two leaks and I've had to fix my water heater. Um, I may have had something else. Anyway, so I literally had to, I took, I took this away to fix the water heater and I couldn't get to it. I had, I removed even like all the drawers in here and uh, I had to go outside and take the whole water heater out and cut out plumbing. Actually, you can see it on my, my other video. Um, so I, I definitely had to, you know, put on like some work clothes and get dirty and um, play with the pipes. But the, even though it might be a downside because it does take time and you have to educate yourself on um, your plumbing and um, all sorts of different things, you learn a lot about where you're living. Like if I had a problem, I could probably identify it in my head just by where water's coming out. Um, so I also had a leak out here. And uh, I had to go in there and like um, dig in real deep into the insides of the motorhome and cut out piping and stuff like that. But it is really rewarding. It does take a lot of time and it's a lot more stress because you're wondering, oh, now I have to think about fixing a leak or something like that. So um, definitely keep in mind that if you get an RV, it's possible even that you're going to have more troubles than you would in a regular house um, just because of all the temperature differences and stuff like that. In fact, that's another thing to think about. Um, my RV, there's almost no insulation. When I wake up and no heat's been on, it's, it's about, and it's cooler, um, it's about five to 10 degrees warmer inside than outside. So if it's 50 degrees outside, it could be 55 or only 60 in here. When it's about 60 or 65 degrees outside and it's full sunny, um, it can be 80 degrees in here and it literally just gets warmer and warmer. So um, I do have air conditioner and I'm going to be using them when the summer comes. So it might be cheaper living in an RV, uh, but there's definitely still monthly costs and a lot of people want to know how much does it actually cost? Well, it totally depends on where you are. For example, right now I'm in Southern California and the cost is actually quite comparable to apartments in Oregon. So it's, it's actually coming from Oregon, my costs have, haven't gone down, but I heard somebody talking about where they're living in Oklahoma and they're paying $200 a month in rent. Plus a lot of places, um, if you volunteer, the, they might give you free propane. Uh, so there's all, there's all sorts of ways to reduce your costs, um, but you just gotta check out where you wanna go, how long you wanna stay, if you wanna volunteer or work. And, um, so it really depends. Thanks so much for watching and be sure to subscribe to my channel to see other upcoming videos. Till then, have fun, follow your excitement, enjoy life, and be kind to each other.